When I saw this sight of the day, I was blown away by its dynamic layout animation and the seamless transition between three different states. It wasn't just the layout animation that caught my eye, the image gallery with a minimap which worked flawlessly during the layout changes really stood out. I could easily guess this was created using WebGL, but as you know, WebGL isn't my thing at all. So I turned to a tool I'm more comfortable with, GSAP. Now check out what I created using GSAP Flip. It not only covers the layout switch animation for all three states, but also includes a smooth minimap animation that moves on scroll. In today's video, I'll show you how to achieve this cool minimalist image gallery using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and GSAP. If you find this video helpful, please leave a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. You can access the source code through the link in the description. Alright, let's dive into the code. Let's start by adding a navbar. We'll create 5 nav items inside the nav. In the first and last item, we'll add some placeholder text. In the middle items, we'll add counters inside paragraph tags which you'll make clickable later using JavaScript. Ensure you assign a unique ID to each of these counters as we'll use these IDs to change the layout states. Next, we'll add a container for the gallery. Inside it, we'll add the gallery. We'll create a div with the class name image and place an image inside it. I'll duplicate this div 13 more times and update the image URLs to display different images. Ensure each image has a unique ID as we'll use these IDs to position the images on the page using CSS. Add a class named Layout1Gallery to the gallery as this will be default layout type when the page loads. Next, we'll add a div for the minimap. Lastly, we'll add a section for image previews and include all 14 images inside it. These previews will only be visible when the second layout is active, but we need them in the HTML for now. Alright, let's move on to styling. Let's start by resetting the default margins and paddings for all elements and setting box sizing to border box. Next, we'll set the width and height of the HTML and body elements to 100% and apply a custom font. For the images, we ensure they take up the full width and height of the container with an object fit property set to cover. Now let's style the navigation bar. It will be positioned fixed at the top, taking the full width of the viewport. We'll add some padding, set the display to flex, and give it a higher Z index to ensure it stays above other elements. Each nav item will have equal width and we'll style the text inside with uppercase letters, a specific font size and weight, padding and a cursor pointer for interactivity. For the image preview section, it will be positioned absolutely at the center of the screen with a specific width and hidden by default using opacity. Now for the gallery container, it will take the full width and height of the viewport with some top padding to account for the navbar. The first gallery layout will be relative, taking the full width and height. We'll define three different layouts for the gallery and configure the image positions for each layout. For the first layout, I manually position the images. I'll paste the top and left assignments here to save time but feel free to adjust them as needed. Each image will be positioned absolutely within this layout with specific dimensions. We'll position the images within layout 1 by assigning top and left values to create grid-like structure. The second gallery layout will be fixed at a specific position with different dimensions and margins for the images.
The third gallery layout will again be relative with each image absolutely positioned at the specific coordinates and dimensions. Finally, we'll style the minimap. It will be fixed at a specific position with defined width, height, border, border radius and hidden by default using visibility and opacity. Alright, let's get to JavaScript now. Let's start by setting up a smooth scrolling experience using Lanis. We create a new instance of Lanis and set up a request animation frame loop to keep it running smoothly. Next, we register GSAP plugins, flip, custom ease and scroll to plugin. We also create a custom ease curve named hop for smoother animations. Now let's grab the necessary DOM elements, nav items, the gallery, the gallery container, image previews and the minimap. We'll also keep track of the active layout with a variable. Next, we define a function to switch layouts. If the new layout is the same as the current one, we simply return. If we are switching from layout to gallery to another layout while the page is scrolled down, we first scroll back to the top. Once the scrolling is complete, we call switch layout handler function to perform the actual layout switch. Then we define the switch layout handler function itself. First, we capture the current state of all the images in the gallery. This allows us to animate the transition smoothly using GSAP flip. Next, we remove the current layout class from the gallery and add the new layout class. We then set a stagger value for the animation, which determines the delay between the animations of the individual elements. If we are switching to or from the second layout, we set the stagger value to 0 for an instant transition. Using flip from function, we animate the transition from the current state to the new layout. We set the duration to 1.5 seconds and use our custom using function hop. We then update the active layout variable to the new layout. If the new layout is layout to gallery, we fade in the image previews and the minimap. We also add scroll event listener to handle the scroll behavior. If the new layout is not layout to gallery, we fade out the image previews and the minimap. We also remove scroll event listener and clear any previously set transform properties on the gallery and minimap. Finally, we update the active state of the navigation items to reflect the new layout. This function ensures a smooth and visually appealing transition between different gallery layouts while keeping the user experience seamless. Next, we add event listeners to each nav item. When a nav item is clicked, it triggers the layout switch by calling the switch layout function with the ID of the clicked item as the new layout. Next, 
we define the handle scroll function which is crucial for managing the scroll behavior in the second layout. First, we check if the active layout is layout to gallery. If it's not, we simply return and do nothing. We then calculate the heights of the image preview section in the gallery. We also get the current scroll position and the height of the window. Next, we compute the scroll fraction which represents how far down the page user has scrolled relative to the scrollable height of the image preview section. Using this scroll fraction, we determine how much to translate the gallery vertically. I would tell you that the multiplier was found through experimentation and trial and error based on the height of the gallery container and the image previews. The gallery translate y value moves the gallery up as the user scrolls down, creating a parallax effect. Similarly, we calculate the vertical transition for the minimap, making it move within its container as the user scrolls. We then use GSAP to animate the vertical translations of both the gallery and the minimap. These animations are set to update with minimal delay, ensuring a smooth scrolling experience. Finally, we add an event listener for the load event to ensure the scroll handling is triggered if the page loads with the second layout active. This completes the JavaScript setup for our dynamic layout gallery with smooth transitions and interactive minimap. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.